securing a server. Okay, now that we have seen on the performance aspect and things like that, now securing. Okay, yeah, this is actually a very, very specialized task. Eh? Um, you know, uh, that um, um, how do we, uh, so what are the levels of security? So let's talk about that. Servers are important part of any infrastructure and securing them is very important. We all know that by taking proper steps, we can ensure that the servers are patched and secure. Uh, we need to take a uh, look at the vulnerability the servers pose to the network and do, and and how these machines can be secured. Okay, so there's normally a task which is uh, done by a specialized team, but let's understand. Okay, I okay. Uh, I just wanted to. Okay, let me. I think it's not here. Hmm. Okay, so how do you how do you harden a server uh, or when I say how do you, what are the tools available to secure your server? Okay, the first tool, the first tool which did not exist in earlier systems is your firewall. Okay, so every system, uh, now if you see my, I, I conveniently switched off my firewall. Okay, so. Okay, very convenient you stop. Not correct. You need to start this. Why we do it is because we are not test bed and because we want to test it. Uh, we don't know what ports to open. So the safest, uh, I mean the easiest option we take is open all ports or open all the ports. Okay. So firewall is the first level of security that you can have uh, within your server when applications are coming. Okay. The next set of uh, uh, tools that you can have uh, is um, probably I should, uh, uh, okay, so while installing, okay, let's do these basic things and I'll come to that other one because that is more nice to know. So while installing servers, uh, make sure correct services and packages are installed. Uh, installing extra services or running extra services are unnecessary. So that means install, uh, install only the required package. That means you start installing with the base package alone. Yesterday we saw what is base package installation, right? That is the basic 200 odd packages that you first install. Only start with that. From that also there are other things which you do, we will see that, okay? Then if you have used Ubuntu, Ubuntu will never allow you to log in as root. He will first allow you to log in as normal user and then ask you to connect. That is another important approach. Okay. Um, then, uh, yeah, we know about password usage and all that. So uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, when when uh, I I uh, recently saw uh, a guy maintaining a, a, a set of uh, uh, passwords in an Excel because uh, I I wouldn't blame him. He had twenty different passwords for servers, uh, he was maintaining a, a, a big uh, database farm and each one had its own password. I, I do not know why. We should have probably implemented an SSO and things like that. So yeah, if that thing goes, yeah, I, I know you need to be within the organization to access these servers, but there are people who can still break into it. Okay. Uh, so that is one thing. Uh, we, we know where are ways to manage. One of the sort of any breaches and other things and I, I, I'll just come to this last point as I uh, come to this. Okay, so first thing I said is install the base image, install only the base image, remove unwanted packages and start your firewall with the least amount of uh, uh, ports open. Okay, that is the first thing. Then you have to, you see it is a standard practice, I think uh, be it security engineers or not, uh, we should use this tool. I, I'm sure, uh, are you kind of aware of this tool? Okay, and Nmap, uh, Nmap, I mean this has been there for ages, every security guy use this tool, it's called Network Mapper, what it does is it will help you to show you all that ports are open. So the next step you actually do is make sure you run a scan of Nmap to see what ports are open and immediately shut them down. So now you have two layers, right, one you have a firewall and the other one is your 
in mind. With these two basic uh, uh, basic uh, stuff, you kind of uh, uh, secure at, at a base level. This is the minimum requirement. Okay, apart from user uh, user password handling and user and things like this. So at least what I know is uh, I wouldn't have opened uh, a port. Uh, I see when I when I start my system, I need only maybe an SSH port and then a, a web port. Why should I open an FTP port or some other port? It is unnecessary. So, uh, so this is the basic thing which we start and we use this map to uh, uh, run it. Okay. Then the other tools that you get is how do you handle uh, what commands can a user run within a, a within a Unix system? And we use sudo for that, right? I'm sure you're aware of this, right? So that is the third level that you are bringing in access control using sudo. Okay. And you know today telnet you can't log in, right? Tel login with telnet is dead. It, it's all about SSH. Okay. So uh, by default this is going to be there. So these are uh, basic things that would come in. Then after this you can try to secure that file, this file. So that depends on the checklist your organization will create. Okay. Each organization has a set of checklists that we can do. Okay. Um, so uh, then uh, user can, uh, okay, uh, how do you, uh, uh, I mean these are the general uh, permissions and access, your access control is that each, uh, uh, you know, each uh, organization may have. It varies from organization to organization how they want to uh, use this. And I, I can tell you, uh, you know, uh, from having worked in, at, a, at a quite a uh, you know, senior level that they don't go into uh, uh, a very detailed access control list. Today, most of the organizations suffers with using a sudo, uh, using minimal installation, closing all the ports which are not required, and, and uh, uh, you know, and, and then running a scan to see all what what are working and things like that. Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah, I, I know these access control lists are there. But this is a very tedious process, and I can tell you today, not much people get into uh, trying to control a file through these methods because uh, 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 most of it is already taken care by closing up the uh, respective port. So, uh, but we can handle this for the ports which are open. So, if you take your web servers, where your file it will be under where whtml. So that pipeline you just see what what are the files you want to give execute permission, what are the, you want to give write, what you want to give read. It's only in that level we manage, but not anything below that. Okay, so yeah, this is a set of, uh, uh, I mean, these are not security things. Uh, these are set of uh, uh, symbols which indicate whether it's a file or a directory or a special file, etc. Okay. I'm sure you know about the X. Uh, is this something which you, I guess you're aware of, right? I uh, I hope uh, uh, most of you all know the uh, UGO, U User Group Read Write 421. I'm sure everybody knows about it, right? And because I don't want to emphasize because this is a very basic uh, thing. Okay, then. Um, yeah, you can, uh, so find is a, you know, uh, through find you can literally do a lot of search, uh, various kinds, whether whether each, uh, how many of the files are in execute, how many in the read options, there are various things that you can do. And uh, make sure non-root accounts have uh, a set UID, okay, so that you are kind of aware, right, all, uh, so, only, only uh, a user will have, zero and zero. Okay, UID zero, GID zero, and there may be some users which are part of the roots group. Otherwise nobody has zero and zero. Okay. Then uh, security patches. Yes, uh, see there was a very interesting tool which would tell you if your application is, uh, um, is uh, which I think, I mean, uh, you, you should do it as uh, 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 as uh, as normal uh, engineers would do. These are basic things you should know. Uh, this tool was called Nessus. Okay. Mm, 
Okay, this was now there. It was an open source tool where I could run. Uh, I can run a set of tests on my Apache server and uh, tell me whether the Apache was, you know, in a, uh, how how good your Apache server was, whether whether any kind of uh, uh, vulnerabilities that could be exploited. Okay, now uh, the same thing has been today. In the, if you are wanted in the open source world, that is a uh, okay. I, Open source. Yes, yes, I forgot that name. Okay, Open VAS. Open VAS is uh, the replacement for Nessus. So they also do the same thing of vulnerability scanning. Okay, see, Nmap is used for port scanning, but if you want to do vulnerability scanning, that means testing your applications within the port. I will run some commands to test. If that particular application can be exploited by sending in some uh, 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 pro protocol commands, like see HTTP, I, you saw me. I send get. I can send post. There are various protocols. So each way, each application has their own protocol. I will fire these protocol commands, and then uh, and then uh, uh, and then uh, analyze whether this application is vulnerable or not. So today, Open VAS will it can help you. Or do that, okay? Yeah, uh, see, these are primarily info related because we don't do this activity. It's uh, uh, idly, and uh, uh, we ne we need to know them. We need to definitely know them, but uh, uh, security is idly taken by the security team. We do not want to get involved with this because uh, uh, it requires specialization. Okay, but it's very very important. As DevOps engineers, to know all the security systems, understand the security features, understand what tools they may be using. Some of which you should do it from your end as a preliminary, uh, as a preliminary uh, testing purpose. Okay. Okay. And sudo, right? With sudo, what is the greatest thing? I can allow each user uh, telling him what commands he can run. Okay. I can allow a user to say he will only do shutdown, but uh, other other user can um, uh, only uh, 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 only run an ls or a move or a normal Unix command. I can literally control this, and this is very extensively used. And uh, they have number of sudo files maintained each each time they change the stuff, and this is kept extensively actually. Okay, but ap applicable only to Unix. Huh? I mean, this Windows it is not applicable. So Windows, you will have to use Active Directory. So SSH, I'm sure everybody knows about SSH. I know how you. I'm sure you know how to configure them as well. Okay, there is nothing much that to emphasize here. Yeah, let me know if if, if any of this is uh, uh, if any of you are not much aware. I uh, I can we can go through this stuff. So nothing much. Uh, we don't configure anything on SSH. Everything SSH today. Has been designed in such a way uh, 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 we can use it default. Install it, start using it. Just start. Make sure the service starts. You don't have to configure anything. And you and you're advised not to make any changes because this is at this moment designed in the best form of uh, uh, security enabled. Okay. So managing users and permissions. Yeah, uh, you know this is a bit too detailed. Uh, and I, I do not know whether we would do this activity. I'm sure, as DevOps engineers, we don't do this uh, because this falls into the realm of the security experts. Okay. Logging. This is something which we do. Okay. So we should make sure that we enable all the logs and keep. We uh, uh, now one big activity you would do as a DevOps engineer is accumulate your log. Transport your logs, process your logs, and probably today, uh, 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 we, what we do is we store them in uh, these uh, databases like NoSQL databases. Okay, so uh, people like to keep a lot of these old history data uh, 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 about basically uh, your, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you may be knowing these files, right? UTMP and uh, WTMP. Uh, these are where all your last logins and all are, uh, are kept. Um, so all your login information, um, all these are actually kept in this UTMP and 
um, uh, UTMP and WTMP files, you would want to log these things. Okay, the, but these logs are uh, uh, are for uh, general syslog. Then R syslog, you want to see who who's done remote logging. Okay, so these are logged and kept at uh, specific uh, places. You process them and then store them for I mean whatever time that may be. Used. This is a task you should know, and you should write scripts to do this uh, thing. Okay. Okay, password policy, yeah, not our domain. Uh, this needs to come from the uh, uh, purview of the, uh, uh, the security team. Okay, they would handle it. And we may we may just run the commands as requested by them, but we don't actually work on this. Okay, so all this is, is through the general... Uh, yes, so firewall, uh, firewall act uh, system level we actually do. So that's why I said we need to use nmap. We run our nmap to make sure that all our firewall rules are as described by the security team. We should make sure that. And the only way to do is, is through these nmap tools like nmap and which we run. Okay, so uh, we uh, uh, normally even the firewall scripts are given by them but you can also do it. It's not a very complicated thing. Uh, so uh, IP tables is a standard thing which which is installed in all these machines, and uh, and then but the rules are something which is uh, uh, defined by the security team, and based on that we run the uh, run the commands. Okay, so uh, configuring we can uh, you know IP table uh, is the uh, IP table is the command through which uh, again by default you don't have to install IP tables; it is installed by default. Okay, everything comes default, but <laughs> Yeah, as I was doing, yeah, we don't shut it. It's, it's a bad practice. Uh, now, we uh, so if it was shut down, right, how do we auto make sure that it's automatically started? We use tools like Puppet and things like that to make sure it is started. Uh, it is started if, if, if it was stopped by some process or by, uh, by accident as such. Okay. So IP tables, um, so uh, what are the, there are three different chains in an IP table, input, uh, this is a chain uh, used to control the behavior of incoming connections. Forward, mm -hmm. this chain is used for incoming connections that are actually that are actually being delivered locally. Think of this as a router. For us, the best case to think of this is, uh, you know how the uh, uh, nginx behaved, right? Nginx would uh, translate uh, 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 if you use it as a load balancer. Uh, it will translate your uh, port and your IP to something else. Okay, that's the way to look at it. Okay, and then the third is output. This is used to control the behavior of outgoing connections. Okay. So let me, uh, okay, so let's start it and uh, uh, So IP tables. Okay, this is the present uh, status. Okay, and uh, you you see this uh, forward chain, your output chain, your input chain. Okay, and um, yeah, the the protocol. Um, so I can go. Uh, the control can happen through put protocol. Uh, IP, uh, your socket, there are various ways that you can uh, connect and everything will have a source and it will have a destination. Here it says anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Okay, so input, forward, output, uh, source, destination, protocol and probably your pack, uh, uh, socket itself. We can even control that also. Okay. Okay. So command to expect uh, uh, accept connections by default is policy input expect and so is for the output and forward. So you want to uh, uh, drop something, so we just say uh, input and, and this is a default, okay. But if you want to use it um, uh, as per, okay, uh, I think that's in there. So if you want to specify, then uh, you need to specify an IP address, you need to specify your protocol, uh, and there are, I mean, I, I don't, out of my mind, I don't remember all those, that entire sequence, 
and uh, you you need to specify what to exit, what to drop. Okay, so it is as simple as that. It is not a complicated thing. And I said this is based on IP, your protocol, and maybe your socket itself. Okay, so so when when your default chain policy is content, you can start adding rules to IP table, so it knows it knows what to do when it encounters a connection uh, from or to and uh, used an, a particular IP or a put. And uh, in this guide, we're going to go over the uh, connection. So accept is allowed, drop is drop, uh, and uh, uh, um, act like it never happened. Okay. Uh, this is best you want to uh, uh, want the resource to uh, realize that your system exists. Okay, that's the whole idea there. Huh? And reject, uh, don't allow the connection, but send back an error. Okay, so here it is behaving like in a stealth mode. Here it claims that uh, it, it is there, but uh, you are not allowed at this moment. Okay, so these are the three levels of connection. Hmm? And uh, so here, so source uh, IP. It says drop. Okay, source IP uh, from an IP from a network drop. Okay, and you could also give it in this way. Okay, so mine is J. Uh, it's a drop, exit, and uh, connect. Okay. So uh, you want to allow a specific port. Mm? Uh, so uh, input source. We say drop, and uh, our uh, your uh, uh, your protocol is TCP and the destination port is SSH. Okay, and this is the way we go on a per application based dropping. When I say SSH internally, he takes the port 22. Okay, you could also specify that. So, as simple as that. So, yeah, yeah. you we had a question. <laughs> 